evening to all of you. Thank you very much for accepting our invitation to attend this national press conference for the 51st International Eucharistic Congress to be held in Cebu in the year 2016, January 24 to 31. And the theme of this International Eucharistic Congress is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I know you are all curious about the Eucharistic Congress. What is this all about? What's going to happen? I'm sure napakarami ninyong gustong itanong. That's why the four cardinals are here to answer your question. But before we proceed, may we call on His Excellency, Most Reverend Jose Palma Didi, Archbishop of Cebu, who is the President of the 51st International Eucharistic Congress in Cebu. Their Excellencies, Cardinal Chito Tagli, Cardinal Orly Quepedo, Card Ricardo Cardinal Vidal, and Cardinal Dense Rosales, our beloved Papa Nunso, Most Reverend Giuseppe Pinto, all the bishops here present, dear sisters and friends, and especially you, our friends and the media. Thank you for coming over to this National Press Conference and the International Eucharistic Congress. In the past months, we had events. We experienced events that made us very sad. I refer to the earthquake last October 15 and the typhoon, the super typhoon on November 8. But today, we come together, we gather in anticipation of a future event that should make us very, very happy. I refer to the 51st International Eucharistic Congress, which we in the Philippines will host, but which will be held in Cebu. If we think that the last International Congress in the Philippines was in 1937, then we know that Indeed, this is a privileged moment for all of us. For us, this is an event worth celebrating and rejoicing. Even if only to think that we have an opportunity to share our expressions of faith together with participants from more than 100 countries. That's the average of uh, participants who would come like around 15,000 participants from the different countries, to be able to proclaim our love for the Eucharist and to be able to commit once more our sense of mission for other people. This is among the fruits of the Eucharistic Congress. And indeed, when Pope Benedict XVI announced that we will be the host to us, it is a gift. To us, it is a privilege. But we also know that this privilege is likewise a task. We have to prepare for the Congress. And we have had several meetings preparing for the Congress. We already had three meetings in Rome, several meetings in the country, in the national level, and again, many meetings in Cebu. All of these are ways to prepare hoping that we could come out with a Congress which would truly be meaningful and spiritually fruitful for all of us participants, those who would attend the Congress and those who would even watch the Congress from various means of communication. Today, we're very happy with the presence of our dear Cardinals, with our Papa Nuncio and with all of you. We believe through you we can make people aware that preparations are ongoing and this is worth putting our prayers together and our resources that this once in a lifetime event for most of us, for many of us, would truly be the Congress that we expect. In this press con, we will share with you, of course, the prayer, the theme that we have chosen the logo, and the music or the theme song. We will share some presentations of images of faith and, of course, the schema and how 
many people could get involved through their prayers and also through their contributions. We believe the schema of piso para sa misa ng mundo. In other places like Europe, we say euro para sa misa ng mundo. You know, uh, would be a beautiful way of telling people, rich or poor, young or old, all of us can truly participate in the preparation and in the celebration of the Eucharistic Congress. And so once more, thank you so much for coming. Dagan kayong salamat. God bless. And uh, at this point, we now welcome Ms. Dulce, Asia's diva, and her son David Ezra Cruz to sing live the official theme song of the Eucharistic Congress, Christ in Us, Our Hope of Glory. with great pleasure that we present to you our four cardinals and this is a very rare opportunity na magkakasamang atin apat na cardinals so 
Sila po ay walang iba kundi His Eminence Ricardo Cardinal Vidal, His Eminence Gaudencio Cardinal Rosales, His Eminence Orlando Cardinal Quibedo, and His Eminence Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle. At nagpapasalamat din po tayo sa presence po ng ating mahal na nuncio na walang iba kundi His Excellency Nuncio Giuseppe Pinto. And may we request each cardinal to give a words, you know, about their hope, their aspiration, and also about this 51st International Eucharistic Congress. Maybe, huh? maybe Cardinal Quevedo can start. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. I am from Cotabato City, place of the Bangsamoro. <laughs> And uh, <clears throat> we had great hopes also in the Balsamoro. We usually call uh, Jesus our peace and reconcile reconciler. We call Jesus our savior and redeemer. But through the Eucharistic Congress, we know that all these titles of the Lord Jesus are really summarized concretely in Jesus as the Holy Eucharist. Because the Holy Eucharist is the Paschal Mystery, the memorial of the Passion, Death, and Resurrection of Christ. And because of the Resurrection, Passion, Death, we know that Jesus is Savior, Reconciler, and Peacemaker. That is why I have a special message for really the young people in the country. Christ is in you, my dear young people. Christ is in you. He is the hope not only of your glory, is the hope of the whole country. Christ is in all of us. Not only through baptism, but Jesus gave us his life. And by the giving of his life, we become like him. Like him. And so, young people, especially you, the hope of the future, become who you are. Christ present in you, Christ being represented by you. And I also have a message for the poor in our country. Most of our people are poor, particularly in central Mindanao, one of the most depressed areas in the country. And for all poor people, Christ is also in you. You are the privileged faces of Jesus. Privilege because Jesus himself said so. Unless you do these things to the least of my brothers and sisters, all these things you do unto me. You are the privileged ones in our country. Become what you are. Christ present in you, you carrying Christ in your own faces. And in your own hearts, become what you are. And when you become what you are, young people and poor people, you can change our country for the better. Because He is the hope of your glory. He is the hope of all of us. And for your information... Alam niyo po, His Eminence Ricardo Cardinal Vidal ay naging isa pong witness noong 1937 First International Eucharistic Congress kung saan po siya ay isang communicant at the age of six. So, Eminence, a message po. Eminences, Your Excellency, and brothers and sisters in Christ, I had the privilege to be present in that 1937 Eucharistic Congress where I was privileged to receive my first Holy Amen. Communion. Without revealing my age, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I had that privilege and I still remember how we were prepared for two years before the Eucharistic Congress. All of us children representing our, our provinces would be asked, why are you around? 
and the answer would be only to see Jesus. How will you see Jesus? You will receive that, that uh, round white one. Do you believe that? Yes, because he says, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you will not have life in you. So we were always told that the focus is always on Jesus in the Eucharist. And I'm very happy that that is the, the motto of our Eucharistic Congress. You know, I, when I was representing Marinduque, the first time I came to Manila from the province, you know, I had two discoveries. First, for the first time I saw, because in our town, only concrete sidewalk belong to the rich people. When I saw Manila, all the roads were concrete. I said, napakayaman pala nito. <laughs> the second is, because I am letter V, we were surrounding the altar, and I am letter V. I am along the way. And when I saw the Cardinal Legate, I said, what kind of priest is he? All in red. And he looks like, he looked like a queen because of the 24 yards of Magna Papa. For us now, it is only 12. <laughs> now, then, then it was 24. He said, he looked like a queen. Yes. Those, those were the two discoveries I had when I had the first time I reached Manila. And, you know, in all our uh, preparation for the, for the Eucharistic Congress, we are always focusing on Christ. And we had to always to attend because we have to memorize the, the theme, the, the Eucharistic theme, no? which was in Spanish, and we did not understand what was it. <laughs> Gloria Jesus, que se entierra en la hostia de bendición. We have to memorize that so that when we would attend the Eucharistic Congress, we would not be carrying with us anything. So I am very happy that among ourselves here, perhaps I'm the only one surviving. <laughs> because this will be the second time I'll attend the Eucharistic Congress of the Philippines. Although I've attended already several conferences all over the world, but this time I'm very happy that it will be repeated in the Philippines. Thank you. And His Eminence, Gaudencio Cardinal Rosales. Alam niyo po, sabi ni Lolo Densi, kahit hindi po siya direct witnesses, pero he always tag along, no? Tama, Lolo? Yes, any message po? So, maganda umaga po sa inyo lahat. Uh, Excellency, brother. I was four years old at that time. <laughs> So I will not hide my age. I'll be 82 in a few weeks. Noon pong magkaroon ng 33rd International Eucharistic Congress sa Manila. Katulad ho ni Cardinal Vidal, ako'y dinala rin ng aking ina sa Luneta. Pero ako'y hindi pa Kristiyano naman. Ako'y pagano pa. <laughs> Uh, hindi po ako nakakapag communion sapagat I have not reached the age for receiving communion. So I was just watching. I could see that big so, so column going up. That's all I could remember. And then since I was only four years old, that, 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 that big that column going up like a tower and people moving around, I couldn't understand what was going on. And then we came home to Batangas. Anyway, I was sleeping all the way in the train. And uh, we came home with candles, Eucharistic candles with pictures inside the candle, yeah. which my mother lit only during baptism, confirmation, birthdays, and events. 
So that's what I could remember of the International Eucharistic Congress. Pag may awa ang Diyos, makikita kong ikaalwang Eucharistic Congress sa ating bansa, sa Cebu. With God willing, I will see the second Congress. And this time, taong tao na ako, pare-pare na, alam ko kung ano nangyayari. What impresses me is the Eucharist and our people, we are the only nation in the world, I could say, that commemorates in our history the first Eucharist in our country. I wonder if there is another country like that na yung unang misa ay ilalagay sa historia o kasaysayan ng Pilipinas. Tayo lang po, alam ko, sa buong daigding. Nung lumitaw ang ating bansa sa kaalaman ng mga istanghero, sa, sa tinatawag din ng daigdig na bago, nung tayo ma-discovery. Kasabay, kagad, kaunabay ang Eucharistia na sabi, idinaos sa limasawa. Bakit ganon? Eucharistia at Pilipinas. Bakit ang Eucharistia ay tangi at hindi matutularang panalangin paghandog ng Kristiyano sa kanyang Diyos. The Eucharist is the unique prayer of a Christian to God. At kung tatunan, bakit? Because the Eucharist is the prayer of Jesus. The Eucharist is the sacrifice of Jesus. It's not ours. We are only riding in every Eucharist, in every bus. Kasalo lamang tayo ni Jesus. Ito po hindi atin. Let's be frank about that. The Eucharist is the unique prayer and offering of Jesus. Kanya, in the Regatas Historia, every time we attend Mass Eucharist, Christ is the one doing it. Isinasama tayo. Kanya, nagiging Kristo po to, ay nasa sa atin. That's why Christ is in us. Because we join Him in this unique soft offering of Himself. Kanya, dapat ipagdiwang. Ito po, hindi matutularan. I will be open with this. The, the Eucharist is, cannot be imitated by any other group. I say, merito, ah, yung mga bago mga, yung mga pananiwala, bagong pananampalataya, I don't want to mention them. They cannot imitate the prayer of the Christian Catholic. Why? Because we are praying always in Jesus. At ito po, i-commemorate that, commemorate that, we'll commemorate this on the feast on January 24, 21. All right, 2016. Kanya, dapat lamang na ito po ating paghahanda ay papunta ron. Iisa ang dalangin ng Katoliko. Eucharist. At sabi nga, itong rurok at bukal ng ating pananampalatay at buhay kristyano. Ito yun. Rurok at bukal. Diyan nang gagaling ang ating pagiging kristyano. Uh, Pons, Kulmens, uh, Rurok, Rurok at Bukal. Rurok, yung pinakamata, yung Rurok, pinakamata, pinakamataas na yun. Yan, ay, ayan, hindi ba itinan niya salita? So, sa Patangas at Kabiti, ay, ano mo yun, no? Okay. <laughs> All right. So, kanya, napakaganda mo nito ang ating ginagawa. So, Salamat sa Diyos. I thank God for this gathering because exactly this. And we are the ones that put it in the pages of our history. I don't know any other country who would have that. Thank you po. Magandang tahas. At yung pinakaantay po ninyo walang iba kundi His Eminence, Luis Antonio Cardinal Tagle. Ah... Uh, <clears throat> Magandang uh, tanghali po sa inyo lahat. Uh, I'm sorry, I was not able to attend the uh, Eucharistic Congress. 
1937, uh, <laughs> I cannot give you first-hand accounts of uh, the Congress. No, but I tell you this, my parents were both seven years old during the Eucharistic <laughs> Congress. So I was present uh, uh, through them and in them. <laughs> and uh, that was 1937. And 20 years later, these two uh, young people met uh, and I was born. <laughs> yeah. uh, but just imagining you know, the experience of Cardinal Vidal, of Cardinal Rosales, you know, and they, both of them looking forward to their second Eucharistic Congress, International Eucharistic Congress in the Philippines. You know, wow, it just uh, blows my imagination away. Uh, but I have attended uh, two Eucharistic Congresses, the two latest. Uh, the one in Quebec, in Canada, and the one in Dublin, where it was announced that uh, uh, the Philippines in Cebu will host the, uh, the next uh, Congress. You know, uh, there are many gatherings, international gatherings, that we see in our time. In a few days, no? FIFA, the World Cup, and they say, they say the world will be in Brazil. Uh, then you also have the uh, Olympics. No? Uh, uh, a few months ago, they said the world was gathered in Russia for the Winter Olympics. And you had the World Economic uh, Forum in Davos. No, you have APEC 2015. They will say the world will be present there. Okay, we... We, uh, we recognize uh, those gatherings as international. But the church is universal. The church is Catholic. And by the very word church, ecclesia, e iglesia, that means a people gathered by God. Not, not gathered by something, but gathered by God who is Trinity, communion. And no better way to gather the world than by responding to God's call. That is the mystery of the International Eucharistic Congress. And we are happy that the Catholic Church through the years has been gathering, you know, in different places through the Eucharist. And thanks to Pope John Paul II, we also have the gathering of the world through the youth, the World uh, uh, Youth Day, and also the gathering of the world through families, the world meeting of families. No? So, uh, di lang football, <laughs> di lang mga kung ano-anong games. No? No? Christ in the youth, Christ in families, Christ in the Eucharist, bringing the world together. Ano pa ba? <laughs> Lastly, lang, no? and dami ng magagandang sinabi, no? uh, the youth, the poor. And, uh, but I just want to end by sharing with a, a short reflection on the theme. No? Je Jesus in us, no? the hope of glory. And I think this speaks uh, very well, not only for us in the Philippines, but for Asia. I would like to think that while the Philippines is hosting this Eucharistic Congress, and the first Eucharistic Congress that happened in Asia was here in the Philippines in 1937. No, uh, uh, pag sinabi nilang Asia, kalimitan na uh, Philippines. So, hindi lang ito sa Pilipinas, hindi lang sa Cebu, kundi Asia. And what better theme than the theme of hope? Alam nyo mga kaibigan, mga kapatid, no po, uh, we have many wishes. We have many wishes. We wish for a good job. We wish for a, a stable life. We wish for this. We wish for that. But wishes are not hope. People may have many wishes, but not have hope. The theme of the Eucharist Congress is not about fleeting caprice and wishes. 
but about the deepest thing that defines a hum human being in a society, hope. And even grammatically, you know, in English, we say, I wish that. But you say, I hope in. We only hope in a person. We hope in God. But before we can hope in God, this God has already come to us. That's why there is greater reason for hope. We are not hoping in someone who is distant, in someone who is cold, in someone who does not understand our sorrows and pains. We place our hope in someone who has been a refugee, someone who was betrayed, someone who was homeless, someone who was the object of ridicule, someone who was killed, but someone whom God raised back to life. He is in us. That's why we have hope. Creation has hope. The people of Asia have hope. Many of our wishes will not come true, but our hope will never fail. And we hope we will have that strong message as we prepare for the Eucharistic Congress through our lives, through our relationships, through the dy dynamism of Jesus who is in us. So, bago ito maging Sunday homily, uh, tatapusin ko na po dito. So, maraming salamat po. Most Reverend Cardinals, Archbishop Palma, dear friends from the media. Last night, Mrs. Elvira Go came to the Nunchutor and told me tomorrow we have a press conference to present the International Christian Congress of Cebu. I said, congratulations, thank you for telling me. <laughs> and after that, she told me, are you coming? <laughs> I said, I don't know. I, I don't know what to do. I have to do tomorrow. Please leave me some time to think. Tomorrow I'll see. I'll try. So during the night, I was thinking about the Sacristic Congress. It was something that I recalled when I was a child that my parents and relatives, when there was some ceremony, some celebration at church, they left everything and they went to the church to pray. They said, now, what can I do? Maybe the only thing to do is to do like them, to leave everything here and to go. <laughs> not to see Elvira go, but to see, <laughs> to, to, see, to see you and stay with you. Meantime, I heard a voice saying, where are you from? I said, I'm from Jesus, the source of my life. He says, oh, what, are you, what answer? I, I never answered like that. And after that, who are you? I said, a disciple of Jesus. And where are you going? I'm going to Cebu to meet Jesus. And I am here to start this way to Jesus in Cebu. Thank you.